Can I sit down, please? Hallelujah. There's nothing as sweet as the presence of God. Amen. There's nothing as sweet as God's presence. Hallelujah. His presence is the sweetest. The sweetest. Amen. Glory be to God. We had a, a glorious event in Tanzania. I believe the nations have been shaken with the power of God. We live in a new day. We live in days of glory. Hallelujah. And if you were not here on Friday, please listen to the testimonies and to the message that I ministered on Friday. I believe the Holy Spirit released that message on Friday. I encourage you to listen to it 10 times or more. What happened is that faith will be stirred in your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Enough of prayers without answers. Enough of prayers without answers. Hallelujah. I miss you. I've not seen you forever. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Me too. That's you know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When Sister Regina is not there, there is an absence. There are some people. Who, there are some people who carry presence. Amen. She's so identified with our church in the way that when she's not there, you feel it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, children of God, I'm saying the days of glory has started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was glorious on that mountain. The mountain in Tanzania. And I want to encourage every member of this church and ministry and to tell you, please, if you have not been traveling with us even once, I encourage you to travel, to look for an opportunity and travel with us. Amen? There are many trips coming for the year because it refreshes you spiritually. You can never be the same when you go to some of these trips, I believe that those who travel with us to Tanzania will never be the same. Amen? Their lives will be changed forever. So please, Friday, the last Friday, we had a, I believe, a time to... My wife shared a little bit about some of the things that happened. I want to encourage you to make sure that you go and listen to that message. All our church online from around the world. One of the great things in traveling is that you meet members of our church online. Many people telling me they watch us from Czech, Czechoslovakia, of different places. You, we are speaking to the world. It made me tremble standing here. The world is listening. Amen. We have more than 83,000 subscribers. That's a lot. People are listening all over the world. Amen. So I just tremble talking because people from, from Europe, from uh, Germany, from different parts of the world who are part of what God is doing here. So you are not alone. You are being watched from around the world. Some of them already know you. So you can't hide. If you go to, to France, you want to do some strange things, you say, ah, you're from Miracle Center. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I tell young, young people is that you must be so, your, your commitment to the Lord must be so clear in school in a way that Unbelievers will help keep you straight if you are going wrong. That's one thing I found when I was in, in college. My commitment was so clear, I was called Jesus boy. So when I get angry, they say, hey, Jesus boy can be angry. They are shocked. So, <laughs> and, they are, and the way they say it, I just adjust. So I'm saying people of God. Wherever you are, may you be so known that in your time of weakness, you can be helped even by the unsafe. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you hide, the unsafe will help you sin. 
But if you are so clear and you reveal who you are, they will keep you straight. They will say, even you too. You know, a, a guy explained how he was preaching the gospel, was part of a group, and one day they were running to go somewhere. The, one of them turned to say, say, please, don't follow us. This is not for you. Yes. Because what they were doing was wrong. He said, this is not for you. So the, so the brother remembered that he's a believer. <laughs> and turned back. <laughs> so, so I'm saying, let your stand be clear. At their job site, let everyone know you belong to Jesus. This thing of hiding the Bible under the chair is over. Put it on your decks wherever you are. Hallelujah. Raise the banner of Jesus and say, I belong to Jesus. This is the time for unbelievers to envy you. You make it so clear that when they look at you, they say, this is a child of God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Say, say with me, I'm excited for Jesus. Say, I'm in love with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we had a glorious time. I want to encourage you. Please go and listen and be part of what happened. And join us next time. When we have more opportunity, we'll share more testimonies of what happened. I'm still getting testimonies of the event. It was glorious. Amen. And the anointing for marriage came. I'll share that at the end. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you saw it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The power of the voice of God is just amazing. It's wonderful to hear God's voice. I'll share that with you at the end. Let me keep the mysteries for the end. Amen. Say with me, mysteries. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll be sharing on the manifest presence of God. Or another title of the message is the days of glory. Amen. The days of glory or the manifest presence of God. Joel chapter 2, 21 to, to 32. I may not be able to finish what this message but I just, I believe at least we'll go halfway. Amen? Let's start from verse 21. If you are there, verse 21. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. No, aloud. One, two, three, go. Everybody, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Hallelujah. Fear not. The word fear not is found in scripture how many times? 365. So each day God is saying don't be afraid. <laughs> fear not is found in scripture how many times? <laughs> to, to tell you that God knows what he's doing. Because we have 365 days, isn't it, in a year? So every day God says, fear not. So, the Lord is saying, fear not. Say with me, fear not. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, be glad and rejoice. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Hallelujah. So they say with me, the Lord has done marvelous things. I want you to put King James. Sometimes they just change to exactly what you are looking for. Okay, are you there? Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things, does it? The Lord will do great things. Some versions need to go and wait before the Lord. <laughs> And ask yourself, why, why, why do you want to change a word that is working so well? Because you want to make it look nice. Hallelujah. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Say with me, great things. Amen. Shout it, great things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. So I just want to let you know, the days of great things have started. 
and the first instant is that you should fear not if you were afraid of anything i announced to you don't be afraid the days of great things have started great things in your life great things in the church great things in your family great things in your marriage great things at your job great things in your finances great things in school great things wherever you go great things at your at your place of ministry great things have started Amen. hallelujah the days when god will magnify his name has started the Lord is going to magnify his name in your life in, in ways that you never expected. Amen. Hallelujah. So with me, the great things have started. Amen. It is the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to the nations. We live in those days. The days of glory. So with me, the days of glory. The, the days of glory. Amen. The Lord spoke to me. Why, why I'm preaching this today is, is that the Lord spoke to me on Friday as I sat there. It's a message I wanted to preach on Friday and God changed it. And the Lord told me, he said, the jewel prophet, the, the prophet jewel prophecy is, we, you are living in the time of prophet jewel prophecy. And so we just catch a glimpse of what that prophecy was saying. And I believe that you and I will never be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, God's voice thunders from heaven. Say with me, God's voice thunders from heaven. Hallelujah. We live in new days, new days of glory, new days of power. New days of the release of God's, God's power on earth. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's go to verse 22. You can put a simpler one if, to see if you walk, but if not, we'll just stay with our King James. Okay? Let's read a lot. One, two, three, go. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the days of the Lord, when the Lord shows up, even nature is affected. What human being need is the presence of God. What you need is God's presence. Where he is, things happen. Nature is affected. The plant begins to produce fruit. Hallelujah. Your body begins to produce fruit. Stay in the presence of God and barrenness give way. Amen. Miracles give way. Amen. Stay in God's presence. Your face begins to shine. You don't need makeup. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It means the presence of God has the ability to make you young. It is the presence of God that changes your environment. Everything around you changes. Man was created for the presence of God. You will never, never be satisfied outside that presence. The presence of God determines what happened to you. Things change in his presence. So the crops begin to grow well. Where the glory is, the mangoes will begin to bear better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just came from Africa, ate some very sweet mangoes. So mangoes is in my head now, so sorry. I'm saying the stuff around you begins to do well. Amen. Your apples. Presence do not need fertilizer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It says, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. All the wonders of God's presence. There is nothing like God's presence. Amen. Tell them about there is nothing like the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We give you glory, Lord. 
in Jesus name verse 3 let's go to verse 3 let's read aloud be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month this is serious I want you to understand what the Lord is saying here now they are describing the rain of the year the rain of the year and the rainy season comes in a particular time in one year are you getting what I'm saying now the Bible says the former rain say with me the former rain the former rain and the former rain falls within a year the Bible says the former rain and the latter rain will come together in one month it's revealing the concentration of the release of power it's not a year the bible says in a month to reveal to you that two years of rain combined or brought together to, to in one month is the concentration of god's glory the former rain say with me the former for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you the for down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month shout to me in the first month <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah god is saying the showers of blessing will come so much that in one month the rain of two years will flow, will fall concentration of glory i pray you get what i'm saying you will experience the concentration of the glory of god it means the glory of god will be so intense that your life will never be the same you will be so full of the glory in a way that the ground will begin to shake the storm will give way hallelujah and everything around you will begin to shake because there will be concentration of the power of god in these last days the former glory and god did many mighty things in the past breaking through the red sea causing the axe to float just name them the glory of god was manifest and the fire of god appearing in the night and as cloud during the day hallelujah the cloud we are seeing at our home as cloud during the day and as fire in the night there will be there was such mighty former manifestation of the glory of god the lord is saying that glory which was former in the days of moses abraham isaac jacob david all those mighty manifestations and the manifestation of the new testament and then combined with what is to come all coming together to manifest in the last day because the rain here represents the holy spirit a mighty move what we call a double portion of the manifest presence of god we live in those days when god has decided to manifest his glory beyond description hallelujah hallelujah raise your hands and say thank you jesus there is none like him there will never be any like him hallelujah give god the glory give god the glory father we worship you father we honor you we give you praise we give you glory to God be the glory. To God be the glory. A move of God on parallel in history is coming. I repeat, a move of God on parallel in history is coming. What God will do, I'm telling you, will cause even the unbelievers to tremble. As I told you the last time, the gray zone is over. 
The manifestations of the sons and daughters of the living God has started. The days of manifestation has started and God has begun to move and nothing can stop him. Hallelujah. And you know you are dealing with a living God who has no equal, who has no rival. Nothing can stand on his way. Every other thing is a created being. The devil one was created by him. He alone is creator. He is moving in his realm as God. And where he is, he is alone. And no one can meet him. No one can contest with him. No one can rival him. He alone is God. And his power, no one can resist. When he moves, no one can resist his glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That's why the prophet cried, Oh, that you will come down, that a mountain may flow in your presence. Because when it comes, no mountain stand. Tell your neighbor, no mountain will stand in the presence of Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is none like Jehovah. I want you to shout a shout of victory. Shout the shout of victory. There is none like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And the latter rain in the first month. Hallelujah. When I was praying over this verse, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want my children to believe in the concentration of my power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are living in that season. You are living in that month. Amen. You begin to command mountains to crumble before you. You begin to speak before poverty. It will disappear before you. You begin to release the host to bring billions of dollars and it shall happen before you. Because the world of the wicked is being transferred to the righteous. A new day has come, people of God. And I want you to understand, you live in better promises and better days. It has come, says the Lord. And those days of fire has come where God is raising for himself an unstoppable army. The unstoppable God raising an unstoppable army. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's the days of glory, it's the days of fire, it's the days when things happened at all cost. Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shall we me a move of God unparalleled in history? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to believe God for things you, uh, you only dreamt of. Because you are living in the days of grace. I repeat, in the days of grace. Where the throne of grace is not dwelling among us. God has brought his throne of grace. It means that God will do this out of his mercy. Those who depend on law, who have laws, regulations, and the rest, it will happen because of you do this, do this. The strength of man has failed. Yes. Yes. Those who depend on their holiness, the scripture says their holiness is like filthy rags. I'm not saying you should not be holy. You should be. But what I'm saying is that don't depend on it. That's the difference. Walk with God. Don't live in sin. Don't walk with sin. Because let me tell you, if you live in sin, you can't command the angels. You can't command the armies of God. The Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, you can't play with your life any longer. Because of the armies that I've put at your disposal. Because they can't follow a sinner. They follow someone who is like their creator. That frightened me. I see sin, I run like a madman now. Even in my thought. You know, most of the time, the, the, you may be okay, you can go for days, you don't sin physically, but you are taught. Thought of anger, resentment, those things that you ignore. You get what I'm saying? Because the Lord is teaching me, when you are agitated, you are living in the realm of Satan. 
Because the realm of God is faith. And faith is rest. When you feel as though everything is out of control, everything is collapsing, the devil is speaking through you. Because faith is rest. Being at rest in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. When all hell was breaking loose, when Jesus was sleeping in the boat, he did not get up and start crying, oh my father, why do you allow this? <laughs> he got up and he said, peace be still. And the Bible said there was a mighty calm. Why? He slept in the midst of the storm. Faith is rest in the midst of the storm. Karaka. Being agitated changed nothing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you, are you praying for your children? Don't look at it and start acting in fear. Ah, this, child, this child may go to hell. Father help me. No. no, no. no. That's been out of control. God is not on his throne looking at that child and say, hey, this is a tough case. How can this child be convicted? <laughs> is there anything too hard for Jehovah? Yes. Young man. Is there anything too hard for Jehovah? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Nothing is too hard for the great Jehovah. Glory be to God. So parents, pray for your children with rest. Amen. And say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I Hallelujah. I will be saved, me and my household. This scripture cannot be broken. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You look at your children. I look at my children. I say, all of you, you're going to heaven, whether you like it or not. I don't look at them and say, hey, Emmanuel, hey, Emmanuel, I fear. No, I am not afraid. Fear is of the devil. The scripture says what? Fear not. Say with me, the scripture says what? Fear not. Shout, fear not. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, I'm telling you that there, there, there is flames in this place. Flames of the Holy Spirit. Flames of the great God. Flames of the living God. I announce to you the concentration of God's power. And I want you to begin to operate under that cover. Under that umbrella. Or what I call under that uh, cover. The, the coverage of glory. Because a new day is here. No, no, no. You are speaking as a amen. amen. No, no, no. It, it has to be a better amen. amen. I announce to you a new day is here. Amen. These are the days of creative miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout to me. These are the days of creative miracles. Amen. That which you have prayed for is coming to pass. Glory be to God. Shout a shout of victory. Oh, shout a shout of victory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And the concentration of God's power will result into something. Let's go to verse 25. 24. The concentration of power will result into something special. Precious. If you are there, 24. Okay, put, put King James. This one is not really that bad, but I want King James. Let's read aloud. He said, one, two, three, go. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Let me tell you something about the mystery of God. Fats represent excess. Say with me, excess. Amen. Therefore, the fat was to be burned at the altar. 
because it was considered excess amen and excess results into fire are you getting what i'm saying there will be an excess anointing that shall burn at the altar there will be an excess anointing and that anointing will leave you and raise your head you will run better not because of your holiness or your spirituality but by the anointing it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord and those days have come the days of excess power hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god and it will cause an overflow of wine and oil and wine here represents the holy spirit and oil here represents who the holy spirit so therefore an excess of glory will manifest as wine and oil Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Now underline the word overflow. Overflow. Overflow talks of excess. Say with me, excess. Excess. Say abundance. Say excess. Say more than enough. Say my God is the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. He's the God of more than enough. Amen. I want to announce to you, even in your finances, there will be more than enough. To just have enough is not normal. In Christ, he's a God of more than enough. I announce to you, your season for more than enough has started. You will begin to see financial miracles as you have never seen in your lifetime. Hallelujah transformation god will transform your husband god will transform your wife miracles miracles hallelujah because the god of more than enough is at work so when we overflow of glory overflow of the power of god overflow of abundance hallelujah I announce a season of abundance. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Sister Anita, it is your seasons of abundance. Amen. The devil tried to take you out and failed. The devil tried to take you out and failed. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you were born for a time like this. And your season has come says the lord hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god glory be to god you will invest a hundred dollar and a hundred million will come from the other side Amen. the struggle that that talks of the power of man has ended for god's power has taken over that which is done in struggling is the power of man that which is done in fighting is the power of man because the power of god has taken over Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. remember one thing that paul said i walk more than they are but not me but the grace of god that was upon me revealing that even your hard work requires grace <laughs> it reveals even your hard work requires grace in these last days no man will take the glory it will not be based on your very good preaching it will not be based on your very good methods very good biblical methods it will be based on what the abundance of God's grace the abundance of God's grace the abundance of God's grace so that all glory will go to the Lord Amen. hallelujah no flesh will glory no flesh will boast 
they will look at it and say this is God alone this is the finger of God and I'm telling you the world that is coming will cause men to tremble I repeat that which you struggled in the past no don't bother this time is over <laughs> just touch it with the grace of God the miracles begin to happen hallelujah hallelujah because we live in the days of the overflow no 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 if you are excited you will shout better than that <laughs> we live in the days of the overflow of wine and oil the overflow of God's glory hallelujah say with me the overflow of the glory of God say the days of abundance are here hallelujah glory be to God glory be to God and this is what the Lord will do in verse 25 let's go to verse 25 let's read aloud one two three go I will restore to you the years that locusts had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I send among you <laughs> there are two parts of this message there are two parts of this verse I announce to you stop crying over spilled milk stop crying over the past Stop crying, oh, uh, because of my sin of the past, that's why I'm struggling. No, 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 no. God is saying restoration has come. Stop thinking about your past. Oh, my past, uh, the, the other, uh, my past. No, 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 no. I announce to you that God is restoring all what you have lost. The sensitivity to sin has been restored. You will no more play with sin. You will no more live like a sinner. Hallelujah. So stop looking at the past because it is done. And I announce to you, the years have been restored. Hallelujah. The years have been restored. To God be the glory. The years have been restored. The years when you play with sin. The years when you thought, oh Lord, forgive me for those years. No, they have been restored. You will run faster than people were ahead of you. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe you didn't get it well. See how they are running. Hallelujah. You will run faster than people who were, who were ahead of you. Because the restoration has started. The years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Oh, hallelujah. All those he, he called all type of all type of parasites. The days when parasites will leave you. Both human parasites. <laughs> For those who have vision, let them receive that. I say the years when the, even the human parasites will leave you. Those who are there to use you. Karaba shanda darabaka sharaka robaka raka darobaka sharaka raka darobaka darabaka sharaka robaka daraba shanda so god is restoring the years the locusts and remember locusts they eat every green thing are you getting what i'm saying and i want you to understand this the, the locust represents the eating up of the green stuff and green represents life so i announce to you the years eating up your life struggling god is restoring life into your veins into your bones activating your kidneys activating your heart activating your bones activating your body activating everything that is dying it shall live says the lord hallelujah he's activating it and making it alive for the life of god is flowing through for he is the way the truth and the life 
Rababanda da raka shara karoba karabaka. Roko da raka shara karobaka. Roko da raka shara karobaka. Raka doro ba shanda da raka. Roko raka shoko. Raka doro ba kashara karobaka. Roba baraba shondo. Life has been given to you. Life has been given to you. Let everything that is dead in you live now. In Jesus' name. Creative wombs. Wombs that have been removed shall be restored. The restoration of God's power. The restoration of the might of our great God. Hallelujah. The days of creative miracles for the life of God is now moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. It's the day of life, the day of glory. The caterpillar, the palmer worm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the second part says what? He says, my great army will I send among you. When I came across this verse, I cried. I want to tell you, the host are among us. We have had the angels of God that are under angel Gabriel. The angels, all of you have angels around you. And many of you have three and four and five. Depending on your call. And the more you move in the spirit, the more the angels increase. Because they have to increase your protection and the presence of God because you become delicate in the hands of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. One of these days, I'll, I'll share more on what is happening to us, to my wife and myself. Because we are being invaded by the angels and by the hosts of heaven. And they announce themselves at our home. And you see the cloud of glory where the, end, where the hosts are standing in such power and might. Amen. Child of God, I say we are being invaded Amen. by the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I share with you something that happened to me when I was ministering in Tanzania? Why in Tanzania? I was in the room, there were, the women were, and all the others were up in the mountain praying. So I was preparing for the service and waiting upon the Lord. I sat down, opened my Bible. I want you to give me this cup. This cup. It's okay. Give, give me the cup. And it's even something bigger. Can you get me the, the, the pig milk? Pig milk, yes, because that's exactly what happened. So listen, I was praying and worshiping the Lord, and I was preparing for the service. The presence of God was so strong, and I, as I was worshiping the Lord and preparing for what the Lord brings, yes, exactly this type of, I had this type of milk, this one, the, the, a little bit smaller than this, the right there, I had it ready for my tea or coffee, and. The, the air condition was blowing as I was sitting there because sometimes it's, it's hot there. As the air condition was blowing, my Bible was constantly covering. I'll open the page, it will cover. Open the cover. So I got irritated. I took this thing, put on the Bible like this to hold it. I just put it there to stand. So, as I was worshiping and praising the Lord, in front of me, people of God, this this thing got lifted and put here in front of me but the greatest shock was that i didn't have chill on my bones i instantly received the voice of god because i am teaching you about the word you can't put it on my word remove that thing from my word i trembled I removed the milk this thing. See, it did not fall. It was picked up like this. I said, Lord, what is that? What just happened? It was not that I was looking somewhere else. Right in front of me. God made sure I saw it. Brethren, I was shocked. I said, God, what is this? The Lord said, that word... Is my son. That word is living. 
You don't just put anything on top of it. I tremble. I fear this book now. I'm telling you, I fear this book. I looked at that. I tremble. I said, Lord, I wish my wife was here. She just means a modern day miracle. <laughs> I wish, I wish even my children were here to see the hand of Jehovah. Child of God, touch your neighbor. Touch everyone around you. God is alive. God is not a joke. He is alive. He is more real than your neighbor sitting near you. Let me tell you, God has shown himself. Give me back that thing. God shown himself so mighty in front of my eyes people of God there is no way the air condition could carry that it was full of milk standing there in front of me and even if the air condition blows it will fall like this it was picked up like this removed from the Bible so I had to move from the wind put my Bible somewhere where there will be no wind. For one hour, I worshiped God and cried. I said, God, you can be that. Even, you know I was not dishonoring the word. I just wanted the world to stand. But they told me, the word is not something you put just anything on it. I have my word is called my son is called the word and the word is my son I trembled child of God don't play with your Bible don't play with your Bible that word is alive and is living and that word will defend, defend himself a thousand years from now hallelujah Shout a shout of victory. I want you to shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And I was just amazed. And the Lord told me, He said, My son, the word means not just what it says, the word is a person. When you deal with this book, know you are dealing with the person. The person of Jesus Christ. Children, when we ask you to read the Bible, we are telling you to read a person. It's Jesus Christ. It has made me to tremble and to fear God. Hallelujah. And I worshipped him and blessed him and I thanked him. I said, Lord, thank you for such a rebuke. Very modern day rebuke. When the presence of God is there, there is nothing like his presence. He is a wonder God. I repeat, he is a wonder God. I want you to shout, he's a wonder God. Amen. So, uh, so I announce to you, the great army of the living God has been sent among you. Do you know I sent the host when I was in Tanzania in all your homes? I said, anyone related to the miracle center worldwide, invade their homes, destroy witchcraft, destroy every demonic attack of darkness in the name of Jesus. We refuse to play around in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you, they are mighty armies. They are so powerful, there is nothing like the host. Remember, the Lord is called the Lord of hosts. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me just as he removed that pig milk from my Bible. I should tell his children. He will begin to manifest in ways that will shock you. Don't expect normal things. Expect supernatural things. You are moving out of the normal to the supernatural. Hallelujah. Expect 
someone to be a drunkard to be coming with a car towards you and God knocks the car away. Amen. Because you must live in a time like this. Yes. The, this next two years are years you have to be alive. Yes. Because you will see the power of God in this generation that will lead to the beginning of manifestation beyond description. Yes. Both in America both in the nations hallelujah hallelujah Amen. glory be to God Amen. the miracles are here Amen. the miracles are here Amen. hallelujah the Lord spoke to me he said because I've spoken on the supernatural to become normal he will begin to do those type of things Amen. if it was in those days I would have run out of the house Seeing milk, pick out from your Bible and put down. Some of you will think that this place is haunted. <laughs> you will say, oh, where is the door? <laughs> but I, there was not even a fear. There was just holy presence. And let me tell you what I noticed. I know that I know someone was sitting right there. With, in the chair with me. It was a long love seat chair. Someone was sitting right there. I turn and look. I said, Lord, you are here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said, I show up when my word, when the word is being proclaimed because you are proclaiming me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. You don't study the Bible alone. The one who is the word shows up. <laughs> I repeat, the one who is the word shows up. Yeah. Now the difference between you and Prophet Sadhu is that Prophet Sadhu's spiritual eyes are open. And he could constantly see Jesus coming to sit. Coming to sit. The eyes are open. Amen? Are you getting what I'm saying? Pray that your own eyes are open. Because if your eyes are open, you will begin to see the Lord come to sit near you studying the world. Because the spiritual realm is more real than the physical realm. Therefore, the reality must manifest in the last days. The physical realm is inferior to the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is a higher realm. And therefore, the higher realm has started. We live in the realm of the living God, which is the higher realm. And the higher realm will take over the physical realm. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So begin to pray that your eyes will be open. Shout it. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Show me your glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Then Christianity will become something else to you. Say with me, the gray zone is over. Say, the gray zone is over. Say, Lord, thank you for your armies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was ministering there in Tanzania and the rain began to fall. Now, when you are outside and you have just the tent and the rain is falling, Nobody hears your message. People were struggling, carrying the water, pushing the water. And as I sat there, the Lord spoke to me. He said, five, 50,000 hosts a year. They have come to help you. So they are here for battle. Amen. Hallelujah. So I knew they were there. The atmosphere was charged. Sometimes I even feel them around me. I'm telling you, people of God, things have changed. I told you, this year I will grow 10 times spiritual. And I pray that you get it and grow 10 times more spiritual as you have ever grown. Every member of the church has a chance to grow 10 times in the spirit stronger than you have ever grown. The things you have been hearing of, experience it in Jesus' name. The miracles you have read of, experience it in Jesus' name. This is your season to shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And then the Lord told me the hosts are here. So I looked. I said, wow, thank you, Lord. So when I went on the stage, I was preaching. The rain was falling. So I thought I would just have to bear the rain. <clears throat> so I tried. I discovered the rain was distracting. People were trying to clear the water of that mountain because we were outdoors. So water was just flowing there. And I heard the voice of the Lord. When will you stop this rain? And the Lord said, the hosts are here not for nothing. They are here to help you. Stop the rain. So, I told the people, the Lord just spoke to me. So this rain must be stopped. So I commanded the rain to stop. And I released the host to go forward and block, block the sky. Amen. Seal the sky. Amen. And then the Lord told me, lead the people to worship now until he stops. Because you are in a spiritual battle. So we began to worship God. It was about 10 minutes. We began to worship God. In about 10 minutes, the rain stopped. And the sun came up within as the rain was stopping. Even before the rain stopped, the sun began to shine. The skies were opened and the sun began to shine bright. So I said, this rain is stopping. Yeah. Let me tell you, as long as you permit things, they will torment you. Yeah. You must come to a point in your life and say, enough is enough in Jesus' name. Yeah. The Lord spoke to me later. I said, my son, you could have sat there on that mountain. That rain deals with you. Yeah. Or you because the rain was planned from hell to go for us. And the enemy wanted to end that program. It was so clear. So when will you stop the rain? Because if you don't do it, God will do nothing. He has given the power to you and I. One of the time I saw the armies of God, they came behind our home. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you don't send them, they will spend the night there. They will go nowhere because the earth has been given to man. You only invite the spirit realm here by choice. Send them over Washington. Destroy transgenderism. Destroy all that wicked spirit in the land. For the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God is teaching me something about spiritual battle. Yesterday, I took my daughter, Anna, to go and, to go and play. She's doing some sport, playing soccer things in her, in her home. All the children play soccer. So we're trying to teach Anna to, to play also. So we take her. So she goes once, once a week. And when she went, she entered. She was playing. I heard the voice very, voice of God very clearly. He said, I don't need to be protected. Send the host. So I said, Lord, host, this one is small thing. Soccer. Can I send the host for soccer? I, I argue it in my mind. Within five minutes of arguing, I'm telling you, Anna, somebody came with the head and knocked Anna when they were running. They met each other. And it was a knock. The person was, I think, was trying to bend down. Was not seeing Anna. So Anna was looking at the ball. And the person came with the forehead and knocked her nostrils. Blood started oozing out. It was horrible. And then the Lord told me, I told you, protect that girl. I said, Lord, I thought it was just soccer. On spiritual thing. That's what my thought went. On spiritual thing. The Lord told me, everything about you is spiritual. You let the enemy attack your child. When I spoke to you, protect that child. Release the host. Cover that child right now. 
You say it's just soccer. I learned a lesson. I tend to Anna beg her to forgive me. So Anna, I'm the cost. I was wondering. I said, that guy hit my head. I said, I know there was that guy. I said, but I should have protect, protected you. Forgive me. And the Lord told me, he said, my son, you are dealing with high level spiritual warfare now. You don't practice what you said in church on Friday. You move ahead, you protect your back. Your children must be covered. You must constantly put cover them and protect them. I announce to you, the season has changed. When God is using you, the enemy also targets you. And if he cannot get you directly, he wants to attack your home. He wants to attack your children to hinder you. Because we left that place after Anna was, was injured. The blood was flowing. I had to command the blood to stop. Yes, you, you will not have recognized and her whole face with blood. On her hands, I took her wife, washed her hands everywhere. So the Lord told me, stop the blood. As I put my hand on another street, I said, in Jesus, name, I command the blood to cease. And it ceased. Amen. I told the people, I, don't worry, I don't need your eyes. They brought some eyes. I said, don't worry, I don't need the eyes. Wipe her nose streets and I took her out. And then I went and repented and cried. Yes. Father, help me to be vigilant. Yes. Yes. Help me, Lord, to be vigilant. Yes. The spiritual realm is not a joke, it's real. Yes. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Yes. You are at war. Yes. Child of God, you are at war. And the Lord spoke to me that before major things happen in the life of believers, I try warning them too. Just as I want you. Then the Lord showed me how he told Bishop Mwaka when he was driving on the road. He said, change lane. And he said there was no reason to change the lane. But the Lord said, change lane. As he changed lane, something horrible came out from the other car. Which he, he would have gone on top and he would have had a ghastly accident. Thank God he obeyed. The child of God learned to obey without questioning. His wisdom is greater than your wisdom. Don't reason God out. He cannot be reasoned with the thought of man. All the intelligence on earth gathered together cannot reach the divine king. So don't try to reason him out. He is more beyond words, more intelligent than you. When God says something, just obey. Even if he looks strange. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm excited for Jesus. I'm excited for Jesus. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. The days of God's army. My great army which I send among you. He has sent the armies among us. Let me tell you. The days of overwhelming force has started. Some of you have been in the military. In the army, eh, my dear sister Anita, you have heard the over, what they call overkill and overwhelming force. It's when you attack your enemy so bad that the enemy has no ability to defend himself. With overwhelming force, it's like a thousand attacking ten people. With such ferocious force beyond description. Are you getting what I'm saying? You annihilate the enemy. The Lord told me the days of overwhelming force has started. The battle has been tipped to the favor of the saints. <laughs> Hallelujah! The battle has been tipped to your favor. 
so be not afraid greater is he who is in you than anyone who is in this world the battle has been tipped to your favor hallelujah hallelujah I shared with you on Friday how the Lord exposed a top satanist living in Pastor Bahati's home yes he came he was sent by the satanist to stop the prayer of that church he said those people pray Lord go and stop it and make sure you 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 you, you come pretend to belong to them to be part of them so they came pret he came pretending to be part of the, them and they took him and he was helping to clean the house he lives very close he helps to clean the house and he was living there and he was like a, somebody guarding the house you hand the garden of your house to someone who is there to expose the house are you getting what i'm saying when we're praying i remember uh, 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 lord i told the lord i said father the hosts are not here in vain let everything of darkness be exposed Amen. so the following day this demonic uh, 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 satanic agent was exposed Amen. he has been there for three years he said he has been bringing damage, doing all type of things, and the rest. But he said that they are too strong because they pray, Lord. Let me tell you, there is no substitute for prayer. I repeat, there is no substitute for prayer. Amen. If you have, if you are a man or woman of prayer, I'm telling you, you you resist the devil before he comes. So, this enemy was exposed. And I asked the Lord, I'll go into detail of the exposure another time. No time for that. And I asked the Lord, Father, why is it that this person was exposed while I was there? I can remember talking with him. I met with him. Uh, Prophetess Bahati wanted me to say what to him. And I was telling him, I told him. One thing I just said was, let me tell you, you are serving the devil. When you die, you will know you were serving your enemy. Because he was boasting how great Lucifer is. Yes, how he has seen him once. He has been in this year when he was 18, that's five years ago. Because he was 18. He was initiated by his uncle. And they showed the ring. The demonic ring. I'm telling you, there's a type of ring you have never seen. Clearly demonic. With eyes. You saw the eyes of the ring. With eyes. You could see evil in that ring. He said, they gave him the ring to use it. That he, when he's ready to go, he just crashed the ring somewhere. To activate it. And he said, a wind. He said, a wind. Like what we talked about the four winds. You now remember? The wind comes and pulls him out of his house and takes him for the, for the secret meeting underwater. And there was. I looked at him and said, you, are, you serve Satan now. But the day is coming when you know you have served your enemy. He hates you like nothing else. With a fire bond. <laughs> so the Lord spoke to me as you go ahead, protect your back. I said, see, I said Lord, what does that mean? He said, break and re destroy every demonic attack that comes behind you. So I started praying for this church in another way. I am releasing fire against any wish that may join us physical or online. If you are online, you are not spared. You either repent or be burnt. The day is 
of overwhelming force has started. We are not here to play with you. We mean business with the living God. We have decided all out, blown out for Jesus. So if you come our way, sorry, you shall be burned. The Lord has made us a stone of offense. At the unmovable rock. Hallelujah. Anyone who tries to move us will injure himself. Permanently. Hallelujah. I announce to you, all of you, you have become the rock of offense. The unmovable rock. Anyone who tries to move you will injure himself permanently in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Anyone who tries witchcraft on you will himself die. Anyone who tries witchcraft on you will injure himself, will be mightily hurt. Their power will not touch you because God has made you the rock of offense. And they try to touch you, they will forever injure themselves. The injury will be permanent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Shout a shout of victory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Do you know what? People may have weaknesses. People may have failures. And the rest. But when you touch witchcraft, you have crossed the line. It is the highest of betrayal. If you seek in the power of darkness to help God or to fight God, who are you to kick against the rock? You hurt your leg permanently and you walk lame all your life. You don't touch the great God. He is too mighty. He is too powerful. He is too great. Hallelujah to the King of glory. There is none like him. He alone is God. He is majestic and powerful. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Begin to worship him. There is none like him. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. 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 We shall deal with two verses as we close. Let's go to verse 26 and 27. Verse 26. It says, if you are there, let's read aloud. And you shall have, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed the jewel prophecy has come to pass says the Lord the jewel prophecy has come to pass says the Lord you are becoming a voice to the nations a voice to the nations for the deliverance of God's people for the deliverance of the people of God the days of bondage are over for God says the time for victory has come you will not just have enough you will have more than enough <laughs> tell your neighbor I will have more than enough <laughs> to the left and to the right <laughs> my beloved friend brother Daniel don't just say it to your beautiful wife. Say it to your daughter next to you. Hallelujah. The days of more than enough has come. I want you to stop dreaming. Want. And stop dreaming. What I call lack. Begin to think. You are God. You are serving the God of more than enough. Your season of more than enough has started. Amen. Hallelujah. Just having enough is not your season. Crushing the surface is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Oh, if you don't like this message, I like it myself. The Lord is ministering to me as I'm ministering to you. The grace of more than enough is here. Hallelujah. Stop looking at your small job. God is bigger than your job. I repeat, God is bigger than your job. Your soul has no limit. Your soul doesn't know economic crisis. Your soul doesn't go by the economy of America. Your soul is greater than any money on earth. Your soul owns the gold and the silver. His pocket never runs dry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your soul has no limit. Look at him. And be ye saved, ye ends of the earth. As the scripture says, child of God, you are anointed to win. Tell your neighbor, I am anointed to win. Say, I am a winner in the field. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is fire in this place. There is fire in this place. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. He says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. So the days for you to be satisfied has come. Amen. Hallelujah. Now he says, and praise the name of the Lord your God. <laughs> hallelujah say with me praise the name of the lord praise shout it praise the name of my god praise say i will praise the name of my god praise hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you your life is secret and we call it the secret of the glory. The secret of the presence. And the presence of God is where the things happen. When God shows up, mountain give way. So listen. How do, how do you cause God to show up? Praise and worship. Amen. The Lord told me, you will have three, three, seven days of prayer this year three seven days the first one was last year november so we have three to go this year and you know what the lord said the lord said 80 percent of it will be worship He said, when you begin to proclaim things in the remaining 20%, it will be explosive. Amen. Amen. Shout with me, worship. Shout with me, worship the king. Amen. Let me share a mystery here because this is important. Man was created for worship. I repeat, shout with me, man was created for worship. And I want you to see this. When, Adam, when, when um, the, the, the three parts of angelic beings were created, the first part was the worship part. Which, which was what? Led by who? Lucifer. One third of the angels. Those were angels created to worship God. Created before the creation of man. Before you came, God had already created the angels. Amen? They were created to worship God. And then, the hosts, as I told you, the hosts were created as the armies of God, led by Angel Michael. That's the host. And for many, many uh, billions of time of years, it is said that the hosts were wondering why they were created. Because you created an army when there's no one for that army to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael told uh, a, a prophet one time was talking to Michael. He said, we, we were wondering why we were created. He said, but the wisdom of God is beyond description. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. They were wondering, where's the war? <laughs> why create an army? 
to fight when there's nothing to fight. God saw the end from the beginning. And then God created also what we call the service angels. They are here to serve us. The messengers of God. The ministering angels. Are you getting what I'm saying? Under Angel Gabriel. This Angel Gabriel is the archangel. And Michael archangel. And Lucifer was one of the archangels. Leading worship. And he wanted the worship to live from God to him. And I want you to listen carefully. This will bless you. I've shared this before. But I want to remind you. Man was created to replace the worshippers. <laughs> the Lord was saying to Lucifer, I created you to worship me. I will create man that will worship me out of choice. God opened my eyes to a secret I want to give you. I was praying one time in tears. I said, Lord, because when I saw the way God spoke about David, I cried out to God. David was not perfect. He connived the killing of Uriah to take Bathsheba. That was wicked. David was not, was not perfect. But what caused God to be so moved by David? God loved David. I said, Father, reveal to me David's secret. And the Lord spoke to me. He did what he was created for. So he pulled my heart because he was created to worship me. Read the Psalms and you will find the secret of David. I wept. I said, God, I choose to be among the Davids of this generation. <laughs> Glory be to God. So church of God, I announce to you, we will lead you as an army of worshipers. We will bring God's favor upon this ministry and we will act like the David of our generation. We are not saying we are perfect. We are not saying we are perfect in everything we do. But one thing we know, we love the Lord and we will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Yeah. So let me tell you, child of God, the secret is found there. David was a worshiper. He worshipped God with his whole being. You want to make history? Be a worshiper. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what God reminded me? He said we fight many battles because we don't worship. And the Lord spoke to me. There were three major battles in Israel's time where they did not have to fight. What characterized those battles? Worship. The Bible says they began to sing and began to shout and blow the trumpet. And God himself set ambush. <laughs> when they worship God fought for them the battle of Jehoshaphat when they worship what happened God fought for them just to tell you child of God when worship is going on it's an open invitation for heaven to fight their battles Let me say this to you. If you are bored during worship, you are sick spiritually. Tell your neighbor, if you are bored during worship, you are sick spiritually. I love you. Hallelujah! Are you getting what I'm saying? Worship reveals your condition with God. 
The one who is fresh with the Lord is pouring his heart in with God. Something happened in the plane. As we were coming, I was struggling a little bit from jet lag. And I've learned not to waste time. If I can't sleep, I better give the time to God than to shake on the bed. Father, help me with sleep. Help me with sleep. I just give the time to God. When I'm tired enough, I'll sleep. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, as I lie there in the plane, could not sleep. My wife was enjoying sleep from the other side. I said, this woman is blessed. Eh? She's just enjoying having fun. So, I began to fellowship with the Lord. And I'm telling you, for us, I was in an ecstasy. You know what was, I was doing? I was thanking God for every detail of my life. How he has blessed us. I thank God for you all. I have a church that loves me. I have a church that loves Jesus. Lord, what more can I ask? I was worshiping the Lord for each one of you and blessing the Lord and tears was through. My whole being was wet with tears. I was crying. I've hardly cried like that for a long time. I was crying continuously. Weeping. Then I turned to the Father and I was worshiping him, worshiping him with all my being and with my tears. I said, Father, I love you. Who is like you? You have been so good to me. And I'll bless his name. People of God. The presence of God invaded that place. I felt as though I will explode. I'm telling you, I felt as though if I put my hand on anybody, the person will be healed. It was that powerful. It was an explosion of God's presence. It was so strong that I felt as though if it increased something, I mean, just burst. I saw another worship that comes with tears. I was pouring my heart of love to the Lord. Crying and weeping and weeping for so long. I cried. Let me tell you something. You have enough tears. For tears to come that long. God has created you with enough tears. Try it one day. You will be shocked how far those tears can go. The tears never finished. <laughs> I pour myself to the Lord and worship in the Lord. And then the glory invaded. I was so touched with the glory of God. My whole being rich was shaken with God's power. I said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord told me, you have touched the heart of worship. The reason for which you were created. Go and teach my children. If they will just enter into why they were created, they will fulfill their dreams. Because they will satisfy my heart. They should stop grumbling, complaining, asking, and worship me and bless me. Instead of grumbling, complaining, and complaining of things not going the way you want or expect, just worship God. So when you worship me, I will take over. Oh God, you are good. My God, you are good. There is none like you, Father. You are a wonder. You are a wonder. I worship you, the great God, Jehovah. The one who sits on the throne, hallelujah, to the king of glory. The angels bow before you. Let everyone who has bread bless the name of the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah to the Holy One. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah to the one who is, who was, and is to come. The great God Jehovah. The nations tremble before you. Let everyone who has bread bless the name of the Lord. For he is good and his mercy is endures forever. Hallelujah to the king of glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That is why, child of God, don't mess with worship. If you don't want to worship, don't mock. I said, if you don't want to worship, don't mock. Yes. If you see people dancing, running here, don't mock. Amen. 
David ran naked before the Lord. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, laughed and mocked and became barren forever. Don't mess with worship. If you don't understand it, keep quiet. I repeat, don't mess with worship. Why do we evangelize? You know why? To bring more worshipers to the king. Simple. You were created for the glory of God. You were created to bring him glory. And to bring him glory is to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. For God seeks us to worship him. Do you know why Satan hate man? Because you replace him. That's why he came to pollute man to make sure he destroy men. That's why he's destroying men all over the world. Because when he sees you, he sees a prominent worshiper, even though you are still an unbeliever. He hates you with a passion. Because he knows why you were created. Every time you lift your hands in worship, you mock him. Every time you kneel down and say, praise the Lord, you are mocking the fallen angels. You are saying, you refuse to worship God by creation. I worship God by choice. I choose to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us on the service will come here. There will be no message. We will just worship God. Until we go home. You were created to worship God. Take your position and history will be made. If you want to be noticed by heaven and by hell, take your position as a worshiper. Hell cannot miss the worshiper. Who worship in spirit and in truth. Because a worshiper is the carrier of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I was created to worship God. Shout it I was created to worship God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. To God be the glory. Shout a shout of victory. And the last part of this verse says what? It says, it says here, yeah, be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously. That had dealt one, no, not verse 27. We will we'll not do verse 27 today. It says, that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. So here lies the secret. If you don't want to be ashamed, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah! The last day army will not be ashamed. They don't care what you think about them. What they care is whether God is satisfied. Amen. My people shall never be ashamed. I repeat, my people shall never be ashamed. Shout a shout of victory. Say, I will never be ashamed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 
because child of God let me say this to you there will be times in your life when you don't understand why things are happening when you are in the midst of that confusion go on your knees and worship hallelujah 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 because when you worship let me tell you something wash my knee the man of god said the more spiritual someone become the more he worships god the less he prays <laughs> He said when he prays for five hours, four hours is worship. One hour is enough to tell God anything you want to tell him. Amen. And the Lord says you should not do vain repetition. So stop repeating. My child Lord, my child Lord, my child Lord. He has heard your child. He heard you. Because most of our repetition is unbelief. unbelief is at work and then we are there repeating things thinking that when we repeat the Lord God will show us mercy <laughs> you spoke the first time he heard you stop and begin to worship him I said thank you for my child thank you because you have heard my prayer I thank you because you are God who answers prayer I thank you because you never fails when I pray you hear the prayer it is done Lord I worship you Lord hallelujah as I said on Friday, you move from prayer to answers to prayer. Amen. Because for many people, they love to pray. Even when they don't get answers. They are satisfied. I have prayed. Come their conscience. Lord, I pray. I did five hours to the whole history. <laughs> when they ask, where are the answers? Uh, uh, one day. <laughs> no. God is taking you from just prayer to answers to prayer prayers were to be answered by god i repeat prayers were to be answered even worship is answered what the, what happened during worship he lives in the praises of his people he shows up and he says, Regine, the battle is no more yours. It's now mine. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. He says, my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Whatsoever shame you is from the devil. Amen. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? God is so so committed in making sure you are not ashamed that he does not convict you of many things he points at one thing when the finger is pointing at you from for many things is satanic because god knows we can't handle 10 things that's why the bible says the holy spirit will convict of sin not sins of sin without s not sins when your mind is accusing you with one thing and they are coming in succession is demonic Amen. why because the lord convicts you and his hand is on something he tells you to deal with this thing and i've noticed that in my life i was sharing with river delha i was crying the other day I said, Lord, I pray better. I'm becoming more spiritual now. But Lord, those days when I was just learning these spiritual things, I will walk into a meeting and demons will begin to manifest. I said, Lord, what is happening? The Lord said, that's where your problem is. You think you have become more spiritual. He said, you had a childlike faith. And the problem with most spiritual people is that they depend on their spirituality. You see, you see what you just said to me? You pray better. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? I am teaching you a secret to the supernatural. And the Lord drew my attention to something that happened. 
He said, you remember the day you were ministering in Washington? I said, yes, Lord. You just pick up the microphone. You shout, hallelujah. You know what happened? Demons began to manifest. They are just calling me from the stage. The man of God is here to minister to us. I pick up the phone. Hallelujah. And demons were manifesting all over the place. You know what I did? I stopped them. I said, stop in Jesus' name. Stop it. And the Lord said, you know what happened? Who caused those demons to manifest? It was not you. It was my presence in you. Who caused the demons to manifest when Jesus was on earth? It was the Lamb of God, the good presence of the Spirit on the Lamb of God that caused the demons to manifest wherever he goes. Did Jesus stop them or cast them out? He said, you wanted to preach your sermons and you got your sermons. He said, I wanted to demonstrate my power. You stopped it. And you said, let me preach first. And he reminded me that I did the same thing in Yaoundé. Even in Muyuka. Because in Muyuka during the youth conference, I, I just speak of my cross, started preaching. Because the demons were recognizing me. They were immediately shouting, falling all over the place. And then, instead of dealing with the demons, I was stopping them. You stop in Jesus' name. Stop that noise in Jesus' name. I thought it was a distraction. God revealed to me there are times to preach. There are times to demonstrate power. There are times that Jesus preached. There are times he stopped. He casted out those demons. I wanted your ministry to represent my son and you refused. How did Jesus do it? The Bible says, with the word, he commanded them to come out, and they came out. He said, you could have stopped and command those spirits to come out. Take authority over them and get them out, and then continue your message. Why were you stopping them? Who caused them to show up? My presence. He said, my son understand my presence the holy spirit cannot be stopped he is the one doing his work don't tell him when to cause the deliverance to the people my son died for he said my power can be more demonstration than your message by exercising my dominion over those powers of darkness manifesting in those people you could have revealed who I am I've repented I told God to forgive me and I'm telling you as brother Vleman said that sometimes when you feel the Holy Spirit it takes time for it to manifest but I've reminded the Lord, this is the year of tenfold increase. Tenfold manifestations. I say, Lord, in most of our meetings, when I open my mouth, Father, I'm ready. And I will not come to preach. I'll come to do God's will. I will come to be led by the Spirit. The Lord told me, New Testament Christianity is not worship and preaching. Worship and preaching. Then you act according to the leading of the Spirit. He said, when the Spirit speaks, obey. Amen. Don't come there and stand there. People must hear the word, hear the word. No, 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 no. No. When God is moving, is greater than any preaching you can hear. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants your faith to rest on the power of God. That's why Paul said, my preaching will not work with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of power. Hallelujah. In the demonstration of the spirit and of power. So the word must be demonstrated by the spirit and power. I beg you, Young people, Josiah, 
Pudya name there. Put your name. I'm talking to the young people. Elena. The young ones. Sarah. Put your name. Shelly. I'm begging you. Don't make the mistake your parents have made. Whoever taught us that a service in the presence of God is just to meet, worship, and hear the word. The Lord is telling me this year will be different. You pick up the microphone and begin begins to prophesy and begin to command demons out and begin to heal the sick. That is New Testament Christianity. Hallelujah. Say the word, the word. I want people to hear the word. He said, Who told you I am there? The word is there, and the word is action. It is demonstration, not teaching people some doctrine that will make them to, 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 to have constipation. We live in a generation that is overthought, overfed. We are feeding ourselves constantly with messages all over in the internet and everywhere, and yet little demonstration. It's not more word you know, it's more power release you need. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's that demonstration that you need. And that demonstration is here. Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, the demonstration is upon you. Hallelujah! And this is your season to demonstrate God's power. Begin to speak and call the world. I'm calling a hundred billion dollars. That is nothing to God. You're looking like something big. Some of you may be praying for me. Don't pray for me. Just bless me. You want to pray for me? Pray in tongues. Don't pray for. Uh, don't pray a lot in words for me because some of you, what you are praying that God will change me. God has made me to be that way. Some of you call certain things in my life weakness, but God sees it through friendly. When you pray in tongues with me, I mean, for me, I'm telling you, you do much good for me. You want to pray for me for one hour, pray in tongues. Don't say, Pastor is too excited, calm him down. I don't need calming down. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory! I don't need coming down. I need more fire. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory be to God. I don't need to reduce my trips. I need to increase them. <laughs> Hallelujah! Woman of wisdom, you heard that? As I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to reduce my trip. I need to increase them. The Lord spoke to me in Tanzania. Take care of my world and I'll take care of your church. He said, you are not just going to celebrate your birthday. You are going into a new era in your life. You can no more run as you used to run. You must run faster. You must plunge yourself. I announce to you, you people will soon not miss me very much. Because miracles that will be happening here, in my presence or without my presence, you will be caught up with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! When we go to Ethiopia, the glory will take over here. And the glory will begin to manifest. And I'm telling you, Sister Betty will stand up like this. Fire will begin to flow over her hand. She will lay hands on Sister Regine. And Sister Regine will fall. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I am saying the Holy Ghost will take over. And he will begin to do his work. Amen. Because God cannot depend on one man. He depends on his church and the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You, you park your car to pick up somebody from the airport. And Jesse, 
pick up somebody from the airport. The moment the person enter your car, demons will begin to leave. Amen. Strongholds will begin to collapse. Amen. The days of the power of God are here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop begging God for money. Command the money to come. Hallelujah. That have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. I announce to you, you will never be ashamed. You will never be ashamed. Elizabeth Mark, you will never be ashamed. I see the power of God upon you, my dear. The power of God upon you. Hallelujah. The grace of God upon God's people. We are God's people. And the hand of Jehovah is upon our lives. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Everyone stand up. Begin to worship him in the Holy Spirit. Shout with me, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I am walking in faith. I am at rest of the glory of God. The presence of God leads me to rest. Say, I am at rest. Shout, I am at rest in the storm. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Shout it to God be the glory. Hallelujah. We honor you, great God. Raise your hands and worship God. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Hallelujah.